Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Remember, the phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. You can call or text your questions in or send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, don't worry. You can also grab your cell phone, dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you will get transferred to someone that can help you right away. Today, we have our special guest, Blanca Pacheca. Thank you so much for being here once again and for uh, being so patient with me. Uh, Before the break, we were talking a little bit about how these limits of liability and financial responsibility work for companies that are Car sharing. I almost said ride sharing. Car sharing. Can you clarify a little bit for me about how your bill works and how these layers of protection from uh, these liability protection layers would work? So uh, this this bill would. Well, let me just start off with just explaining the whole concept of um, you know the Turo. Um, there may be some confusion, uh, but traditionally we have insurance for your vehicle. So me, I have insurance for my vehicle. I want to rent it now. Now I'm using an app, for instance, Turo, where I utilize the app to rent my vehicle. Now I need to get an additional insurance through the app, and that's what we're talking about today. The financial responsibilities under the app, which currently is three times that of a personal vehicle. And then keep in mind, you can also get additional insurance if, say, for instance, you're a little uneasy because someone else is driving your vehicle. You can also obtain additional insurance through the app. So what this bill um, does is it cur- it will leave the financial responsibility at three times that of the personal vehicle because what's going to happen is in 2025 it's going to increase even further and that may um, cause this type of business to leave California. I see. So there's basically three layers that we're talking about. There's insurance that the registered owner of the vehicle has Mm -hmm. and in in California that's the primary insurance. Mm -hmm. Then we have insurance for the person that's driving the car. Hopefully they have insurance as well. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying that uh, this company, Turo, would also allow people, first they would, they have to offer a certain level of insurance and people can buy up from there? Correct. So, and then It's mandatory to get the insurance through the app. So if you're utilizing Turo, it's that insurance is three times the insurance under a personal vehicle. I see. And people can buy up from there if they want as well? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any idea offhand? And I don't put you on the spot because you're not Turo. (laughs) Do you know what the the maximum limits are if somebody wants to do a higher limit? Well, no, that I don't. That I don't know. I'd have to ask somebody from Turo. What can I tell you? It's the insurance brain, right? All I'm thinking is, what's the maximum exposure? How yeah. much insurance can you possibly get? Yeah. Okay. And I know that you keep mentioning how the, the limits are going to be changing in 2025. And you mentioned a bill that um, a bill that Bill Dodd had uh, put into effect. And tell me a little bit about your, your conversations with, with him and how, how this bill might or might not affect uh, the, that particular bill. So uh, Senator Bill Dodd, amazing senator, I have to mention, uh, he had a bill, which was Senate Bill 1107, uh, which doubled and tripled insurance minimums uh, beginning in 2025. And it's aimed at protecting uh, road users, people out there on the roads. Um, but it, he unintentionally also made it also apply to this ride-sharing uh, program. Um, so this was an unintended consequences consequence. This was not something that he intended to happen. And so he's already voted for my bill uh, when it went to his committee. And so it's already gone through the Senate, and now it will be reaching appro- appropriations. We call it appropes, but it's appropriations on the Senate side. Oh, you're throwing jargon at me, I have to ask. So <laughs> g- give us the Schoolhouse Rock version, uh, if, if, if you're probably too young to remember the reference. But if you do, <laughs> give us the, 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 the synopsis. How does that work? So you, you start out and you have this, co- this idea that you want to change the law. Mm-hmm. And how do you go? Th- what's the process of that? What are the mechanics? So I, I have an idea. Or I can um, reach out to my constituents and maybe they have a bill idea and they say, you know, I want to solve this problem. 
Or another third option is sometimes you'll have a sponsor like Turo will come in and say, this is a problem we're seeing. Can you help us? And you introduce a bill, you have legislative counsel review it, help you with the drafting of the language, and then you introduce it. And then it goes to like my committee on the assembly side where we refer the bill and it gets referred to specific committees. So like for this bill, it got referred to insurance on the assembly side. It makes it through. Uh, if, there, it's, if the bill is keyed fiscal, then it goes through appropriations. And then once it makes it out of there, and if it makes it out of there, it goes to the assembly floor. So all 80 assembly members can then vote on the bill. Once that happens, it goes to the other house. So my bill then went over to Senate. And in the Senate, they referred it over to judiciary and to insurance. Made it through both committees already. And then it goes to appropriations, but now on the Senate side. Once it makes it out of there, then it goes to the Senate floor and you have 40 senators who will then vote on the bill. And then oh eventually God. it makes it to the governor who can then sign it into law. Or so, after all, so after all that, it's possible <laughs> that, the, that the governor doesn't sign it. That is uh, correct. You, but you fingers just, crossed. Fingers know. crossed. That's right. So you're saying at this point it's in Senate appropriations? That's it's, where the bill is sitting? Yes. Uh, we made it out of Senate Judiciary last week. Last Tuesday. So it sounds like you're almost there. Yeah, uh, all that's really left after this portion is to get to a floor vote. Is that right? That is correct. After it makes it through appropriations, then it goes to the Senate floor. And then we have 40 senators who can then vote on my bill. And when we come back, I want to talk about what you've done behind the scenes, because this is always fun for, for us <laughs> lay people that aren't don't deal with this. And, and I want to talk about if you talk to other than Bill, other senators, if you have an idea of what the feeling has been from people that are going to be, hopefully, once it's out of committee, given the opportunity to vote on this. We'll talk about that as soon as we come back. This, again, is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman, with my very special guest, Blanca Pacheco, today. Again, I thank you so much for being here. The phone lines are open at 559-656-0317. You can call or text that number questions for me or for the assemblywoman. And of course, questions can be sent to questions at insurancehour.com. And of course, of course, you can always dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance if you need immediate help, and you'll get transferred to someone that can help you. I'm Carl Sussman. This is Insurance Hour. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.